Uh, I'm Mike Moser, and for over 10 years, I was a senior director with the fur industry, both with the International Fur Federation, uh, for whom I was the director of standards, and I was also chief executive of the British fur trade. In that time, I visited fur farms across the world, in Europe, China, Russia, and elsewhere. For quite a while, I'd felt a growing disconnect between what I was saying to the media, to politicians and the general public, and what I was seeing for myself on each and every fur farm that I visited. It was clear that whatever the welfare regulations might say, the reality for these poor animals in front of me was just awful. But there was one moment that brought it all home to me. Just one fox amongst thousands, packed together on a fur farm in a cage that was just one metre square, barely larger than the poor animal itself. And he was looking at me through the bars of this mesh cage with overwhelming misery and resignation. But what moved me the most was the sentiency, the obvious self-awareness of his situation. And it was immensely upsetting. I came home and I was looking at my adored Labrador, Barney, and I could clearly see the image of the fox. And that was the precise moment that the awful hypocrisy of what I was saying and doing really hit me. And the very next day I went in and I resigned. Look, it's a simple fact that most of the animal welfare issues on fur farms will never be stopped because they are systemic to the fur farming business model. This is one that requires farms to have thousands of cages packed together. Without this high density cage system, fur farming businesses would be unsustainable. Under such conditions, it is obviously impossible to give care and attention to individual animals. And experts agree. Even in Finland, a major producer of fox fur the winds of change have caught up. Just last week, the chairman of the Finnish Veterinarian Union reported, and I quote, based on the welfare of the animals, the current cage breeding is one whose time has passed. Why? Because animals kept in cages are not able to enjoy natural behavior. Mink swim, they hunt, they burrow. Foxes dig, hunt, they run and they play. Then remember that foxes on fur farms are kept in wire mesh cages just one metre square, with wire mesh floors and barely enough room to turn round. The poor creatures suffer horrendous psychological and physical damage. Now, the freedom to exhibit natural behaviour is a universally accepted and fundamental principle of the animal welfare. And on this, Fur farming fails and will always fail. The fact is, animals suffering on fur farms is a direct result of caging. Certification programmes such as Welfare and Furmark make no attempt to rectify this and so do not and will never improve animal welfare. Simple. Hmm. The fur trade's claims of sustainability are based on three assumptions. Firstly, that once killed for their fur, the animals can be easily replaced with others. They are a never-ending resource, which is unbelievably inhumane. Maybe that is why today the fur trade talks about textiles and fabrics and circular economies, but not about the animals. Secondly, that a fur coat is a long-lasting, item 30 years or more. Well, this simply isn't the case for the vast majority of fur products. Key rings, bobble hats, trims, these are mass produced and thrown away after little use. And thirdly, that natural fur is better for the environment than synthetic fur. Well, the fact is that natural fur has a significant carbon footprint. It creates greenhouse gases and it uses huge amounts of water. That synthetic fur is bad for the environment is certainly no reason to continue to inflict terrible suffering on millions of animals every year. The fur trade presents this as a binary either or choice. 
And the simple answer is just don't buy either. Well, if you look around the fashion shops of the major European cities, it's highly unlikely that you will see much, if any, fur. The list of iconic luxury fashion brands that rejected it is a very long one. Even Canada Goose, whose brand was synonymous with its coyote trimmed hoods, has gone completely fur free. Fur simply does not appeal to a younger generation that is far more socially and environmentally responsible. It's also a case, I might add, that many fur businesses, from farm to retailer, have closed because younger members of the family simply don't see a future in fur. Is the fur trade growing? No, in my view, it's quite the opposite. It's clear that public opinion is firmly against the trade. In the UK, a survey by the Humane Society International found that 77% of voters want to see fur imports banned. And an astounding 96% of people strongly agree that it's wrong for animals to be killed for the sake of their fur. Over one and a half million people signed the European Citizens Initiative calling for a ban on fur farming and the trade in fur. We know farms are closing and that employment across the sector is a fraction of what it was. The catastrophic fall in the price of fur pelt over the past eight years or more is a reflection of years of overproduction coupled with an equally catastrophic fall in retail sales. So far, 20 European countries have introduced farming bans. More will follow. These metrics paint a picture of a very sick industry in a terminal decline. Well, more than anything, sadness that it still continues. It's almost 2024, and yet it is still legitimate to inflict misery, pain, and immense suffering upon millions of animals every year. And for what? It's a product that is wholly unnecessary. Its value lies only in the vanity of an ever decreasing minority of people. I have sympathy for businesses that have been in families for several generations, but times have changed. Whereas animal science and our sense of responsibility for all animals have evolved, the fur trade has stood still. It's an anachronism, its attitudes towards animals, its farming practices and its products are all stuck firmly in the past. It's completely out of touch with the zeitgeist of a society that is working hard to become more socially and environmentally responsible. In my view, it is a sunset industry, it's in a terminal decline. You now, in some ways, we shouldn't even be speaking about economic impact. I mean, how big does an economic contribution need to be to justify the pain, the misery, and the continued abuse of 100 million foxes and mink, chinchilla, raccoon dogs and rabbits every single year. Precise economic data for the fur trade is notoriously difficult to come by, even for the industry itself. But we know that fur is in a rapid decline, that fur retailers have been closing down for years. These days, fur products are mostly sold by retailers for whom fur is just one small part of their retail mix. These businesses can and have transitioned successfully out of fur. 